Hello, everyone, and welcome to another night of BG Bios. I'm ever so glad you've joined us this evening. I'm Caleb, or Duban, as some of you may know me, um, and I'll be your host this evening. Joining us here tonight, we have yet another one of our mid-bosses for our Mid-Boss Mayhem series. You may know tonight's guest from their involvement in these streams, or for from the many and varied shit posts they have accumulated on the server. <laughs> if you have any questions you'd like to add tonight or anything you'd like to get back at our guest for, please put it in the chat and I'll add it in as appropriate. <laughs> um, and with that, uh, <laughs> indeed, we will get started. So what is your name and what are your pronouns? Certainly. My name is Zach or Hednisk or hey you. And my pronouns are he, him, but I don't really care. And they're she, her on airplanes, apparently. <laughs> we can follow up about that in a bit. <laughs> um, I do have one question already that is relevant here. Uh, Kara asks um, where the name Headness came from. Uh, so it came from the name of an album I really liked when I was in high school. Um, I really, I, I think everyone knows I'm into heavy metal. And so there's a lot of heavy metal music that comes out of Sweden. And there was an album I really liked that was called Hedness Kjartad, which means pagan heart. And uh, I didn't know that at first, but it, it was fitting. I just thought it sounded cool. Gotcha. Perfect. So. Um <laughs> And what are you going to be playing for us this evening? So I am playing Super Mario 64, but I'm doing bingo. So the point of bingo uh, is to get, well, much like regular bingo, get five goals in a row. But these goals are based on things that I actually have to do in the game. So I've got like a million things going on here. <laughs> gotcha. Well, that's perfect. That's how we like our BG Bios guests to be. So off to a good start. So in our grand tradition, I will start off with some rapid fire questions this evening. You need not attempt to answer them controversially, as I'm sure that will come quite naturally to you. Um, <laughs> instead, just say the first thing that comes to mind. There will be three sets uh, with a break in between each one, as you are probably well aware, having been one person I know has watched every single BG Bio. Of course. <laughs> um, are you ready? I am so ready. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Would you rather have a microwave or toaster oven? Oh, a toaster oven. What's your least favorite pizza topping? My least favorite pizza topping? Anchovies. Oh, no, actually, that's a lie. <laughs> Buffalo chicken. <laughs> oh, that's going to be controversial. What's your favorite kind of sandwich? My favorite kind of sandwich is probably uh, a BLT. What's the best time kind of appetizer you can think of? Uh, none because they most of them give me heartburn. If I had to pick, uh, I couldn't pick the best appetizer. What do I normally get? I don't normally get appetizers, but like fried calamari, maybe. <laughs> that sounds good. Uh, what's the best course of any meal? The best course of every meal in what way? Like, what's the best meal course? Appetizer, uh, oh, main course, well, the, dessert, the main course. Uh, okay. Also, whatever my dog decides to let go. <laughs> that's pretty good i am partial to tiramisu <laughs> perfect if you, go. if you only had to eat one food for the rest of your life what would you choose pasta it's very it's very flexible you can do a lot with it <laughs> cake or pie goddamn thing. Ooh, so the worst pie is worse than the worst cake so i'm going with cake <laughs> wrong answer all right there's our break <laughs> I tried to get away from that question this evening. That question got added back in pink. It will haunt me for the rest of my days. No one will ever not answer it again. Please enjoy that. It is hey, I'm going to go uh, entice my dog to let go of my headphones. Hang on. This is completely impossible. You're really ruining my night here. Already with the guest appearance. We we get like full Loki cam here, so... Um... Go lay down. You know? Oh man, yeah, that's uh, this is my life, by the way. This is just what it's like being me. Perfect. So. Getting the full picture this evening. All right, are you ready for the second set? Uh, yeah, hell yeah, let's go. Is Loki go ready to rip your headphones off halfway through? He's already doing it. Go lay down. <laughs> he needs go to wait until halfway through. Shit. Yeah, come on, man. Perfect. Uh, what's your what's your D and D class? Rogue. Unless uh, you're going by those personality quizzes in case it's like 
warlock 90% of the time. <laughs> What's the all-time best karaoke song? Uh, my favorite is Killer Queen. Um, what's the worst movie you've ever seen? Titanic. <laughs> what's your favorite operating system of all time? Gen 2, because it's a good meme. <laughs> what's the best genre of video game? Platformers. Good choice. Uh, do you have an all-time favorite video game console? Yeah, the Nintendo 64. That's kind of a cop out answer. I'm currently playing on one. I'm currently playing a platformer on the Nintendo 64, but... Loki, go lay down. Holy shit. <laughs> Leave me alone. I have like one thing to do ever during the week and you want to interrupt me during it. Hello. I'm telling you, Loki's intro music tonight is Let Me Be Your Star. <laughs> it's like, uh, if you've ever seen I Love Lucy, Loki is just like, let me be in the show, Ricky. Let me be in the show. I want to be in the show, Ricky. <laughs> I actually have not seen I Love Lucy. <laughs> That's like the whole conceit of the show. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, launching into our last set here. Take a deep breath. What's okay. your favorite Discord react? Um, it's not a default react, but I have one. Oh, well, God. What's the one I use all the time? Uh, well, there's Keck W, which is pretty solid, which is really a twitchy <laughs> mode. But you know. <laughs> This is what I suspected you choose. Uh, which is better, umbrella or raincoat? An umbrella. Wrong choice, but I'll let it pass. What's your favorite season? Autumn. Because it's <laughs> the only one choice. that's like not nonstop road construction. <laughs> What's the best genre of music? I mean, the best or my favorite, because those are two totally different <laughs> answers. What's your favorite? Heavy metal. What's the best? Jazz fusion. Okay. Uh, what's the best piece of silverware? A fork. I will eat everything with a fork, including soups. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like you which is better a dresser or a closet a closet but i only have a dresser all right that's some hey. old burger king bag loki enjoy it <laughs> that ends our rapid fire questions for the evening i think we've gotten enough flame in the chat to uh sufficiently justify that round so we're good to go all right uh let's dig into something a bit more serious let's chat about where you came from and where you're going maybe well i'm about to go wherever my dog is taking that fucking bag <laughs> Loves paper, and apparently there's garbage in there. So again, give me one second. Sure. Loki's getting all the attention tonight. Did we expect any less? Interruptus Loki. I like that. <laughs> it's my favorite. <laughs> Loki is a diva. That is correct. This is just how my um, life is now. <laughs> I think it's a good portrait into uh, into how your life is being lived. I feel like Mario Bingo is uh, like 10 times the challenge with Loki to assist in distracting you. Oh, you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so starting off with uh, with the beginning, where were you born? Where did you grow up? So I was born in the sunny town of Gloucester, Massachusetts, right by the bay. She and I grew up there. I currently live there. I'm trying to leave, but you know the pesky pandemic is kind of cramping my style. So it's done as it that goes. to a few people here and there. You don't I say. Have heard. <laughs> yeah. no, I thought I thought it was a unique experience that I was having here. <laughs> uh, who all was in your household growing up? So it was me and my parents. So me, my mom, my dad, and my younger sister. Um, after a fashion. Okay. How would you describe your family? Can you tell us a little bit about them? Uh, yeah, I can tell you anything that you'd like to know about my family. How much of that steam appropriate, I couldn't tell you. But I mean, generally speaking, I get along with my family, right? My dad drives a truck, so he's not really home all that often. My mom's always worked with in, in elder care, so she's off all the time. So it was a pretty quiet house when I was growing up. Um, so it was really just like me and my sister a lot of the time. And I mean, when we were kids, we didn't get along. Our relationship has since gotten a lot better. Um, 
But, you know, growing up, it was, there was a lot of drama around here. And, you know, like I said, most of it's really not stream appropriate. So I, I think I'll probably leave it there. Um, yeah, you know. I think that sounds reasonable. Um, how would you describe what you were like as a kid? Did you get into a lot of trouble or were you a good child? Um, I was a good kid, but like, that's such a loaded answer. <laughs> you know, it's like, I didn't really get into a lot of trouble, as in I wasn't a troublemaker. I was bullied a lot, so I mean, I brought trouble home with me. Um, but I was never like a problematic kid, you know. <laughs> gotcha. Fair enough. Um, what did bringing trouble home look like for you? What does well, what like, does that mean? It was just always, I was, I had a lot of trouble in school. Like it was, you know, I didn't get along with my teachers. I didn't get along with my classmates. I didn't get along with, you know, the administration. And like, it was just, it, it was like all the time. I feel like, especially after like second grade, my mom just kept getting phone calls from the school system. And like, you know, it was just about, I acted out a little bit just because of other issues at home. And it was just, you know, I mean, it was, it was a tumultuous number of years in, in public school. <laughs> Yeah, gotcha. you know, a lot of that changed when I got to like middle and high school, but certainly the first handful of of years uh, were not fantastic. Fair enough. <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> He's totally cut my arm up. Oh no! Like, <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah, uh, kinda. I mean, it hurts, but you know, Loki, go lay down. Go lay down. You can say hello to everybody later. Go lay down for now. <laughs> can you tell me a little bit about your experience at school? So you were talking about that already. What kinds of schools did you go to? Were they bigger, smaller? What's the what's the story there? Yeah, so that might actually be kind of interesting because, like, I went to elementary school, and when I went, well, my elementary school itself was very small. Loki, go lay down. Um maybe like 200 kids in the entire school, something like that. It wasn't very big, right? Um, and when I went into middle school, it was like a lot bigger. It was a city school. Oh, Jesus Christ. Go lay down. Um, yeah, when I got into middle school, like it was a lot bigger and I wasn't having a good time you know i mean after like so after second grade um i had a really bad teacher in second grade and she just kind of traumatized me of off the entire idea of really giving a single shit about school so when i went to middle school it was a lot bigger and there was a lot more um you know i mean it was like older kids you know obviously i'm like what 11 when i go to middle school or whatever age um yeah, you know, that's where the bullying really ramped up, and I like I just didn't do well in school. Like I was failing all my classes, you know, <laughs> and that just kind of, kind of went on forever. Um, I eventually, you know, went into a smaller high school, and my grades kind of recovered. But basically, my entire, um, my entire time in public school, I just wanted to be literally anywhere else. Like, gotcha. Apparently, my dog wants me to be anywhere else right now i don't know if, yeah i'm sure you can all see this but this is what i this is what i struggle with <laughs> i think chat is trying to keep a, a locus interruptus or loki interruptus tally yeah so, maybe hang um, on a second maybe... <laughs> sure. stop it <laughs> he'll just go chew on that for maybe five minutes <laughs> I mean, whatever works, right? <laughs> I'm not going to complain. It's like having a child. Anything to make you be quiet and leave me alone for five minutes. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so when you went to high school, it was smaller and uh, some of your experiences got better. Is that the idea? Uh, well, I mean, you know, better, I think, is a relative term. You know, when I was in high school, I still had no desire to really be there. Um, it was only around my sophomore, not sophomore year, my junior year when I, everyone was like, you know, you got to go to college. <laughs> then I kind of got my shit together, had one pretty good year and then fucked off for the rest of public school and college and, you know, 
Oh no! <laughs> How tragic that was. Um, oh yeah. I, basically, my entire relationship with school for the entire sixteen years I was in schooling was, I'd like I said, I'd rather be anywhere else. So I just wanted to play video games and you know not not deal with it pretty much. I'm going to guess that that's a that's a pretty common experience amongst folks in our community. So I think you're not going to be alone there. Um, yeah, probably. <laughs> what was uh, what was college like? Where'd you go? Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so I went to a school near Northeastern, and I hate that I describe it like that, but it's it, it's a school in the Fenway. I went to Wentworth Institute of Technology, now Wentworth University. Um, studied computer science. So there I learned how to be really fucking awkward around people because no one there knew how to talk to people and you know making friends was great. Cuz as a relative introvert myself who was into computers, getting to know a bunch of other people who are relative introverts into computers, you know, made life pretty simple. Um no one talked to each other and we all sat around, we played video games together alone. It was exactly what I'd wanted my entire life. So <laughs> <laughs> That actually sounds quite perfect. Did it actually you, was. Um, it was really nice. <laughs> did you um, did you have the chance to participate in any activities in college, or was that not something you were interested in? Uh, um, I did, but like being that it was a tech school, there weren't really that many extracurriculars in the first place. Like they had sports, but I mean, I'm not a sporty person in the first place. I'm gonna stop trying this fucking star. Um, you know, so I didn't I didn't do any of the sports or anything like that. Um we did have a an a cappella group for a while, but I did that for God not very long at all before I was like, they don't know what they're talking about. Um, and I had to quit that after maybe six or so weeks. So there there weren't too many opportunities for me to like do things that I was interested in outside of school, but you know, I, I had friends and we played video games and, and it was my first time really living in the city. So I had all kinds of options finally for like going out and doing things, which, you know, living in Gloucester, there aren't really that many <laughs> things to do around here. Um, sure. So, no, um, I mean, overall it was, it was fine. You know, I just, I think the worst decision I'd made was getting an internship my the summer of my sophomore year because once i got a taste of what the real world was like and actually uh you know what what working was like it was like ah fuck school i don't care anymore <laughs> perfect um, um i totally missed <laughs> so never been chris asks uh did your acapella group have a punny name um you know what i don't remember what it was called question. i don't remember what it was called <laughs> I think it was that just like the Wentworth. Time, I think it was Chris. just. The, Sorry. I think it was probably just like the Wentworth Glee Club or something like that. I mean, maybe that was the problem. Is that why you left after six weeks because it didn't have a good punny name? I wish I could say the answer is yes, but that is not the reason. <laughs> I remember Fair they would enough. give us singing advice that was like, just remember to push really hard so it gets really loud. And I'm like, you're just trying to get people to hurt themselves. Like that's not. That's not at all right. You know, like, <laughs> that don't do does that. sound perplexing, even with the very little that I know about singing, <laughs> which is very low. Um, yeah, it was not a good time. <laughs> so what came after college for you? Uh, work. I got a job right out of college um, with the same company or not right out of college, I guess, but shortly thereafter with the same company that I'd interned with uh, back in my sophomore year. I'd actually stayed there as an intern for basically the entire time I was in school and, um, you know, went off to do sales engineering at Kaspersky, which was really interesting at the time because, um, you know, they're a Russian company. And so right after the election, um, you know, what am I doing here? Uh, right after the election, we all lost our jobs basically because of the Russian interference in the 2016 election, you know, you know how it is. So sure. life was good. Um, but that was, you know, <laughs> a couple of years after college, I guess. So I guess I'm going too far in the future for your question. But basically oh, no. right after college, I just did sales engineering, which if you're not familiar with sales engineering, there's a team of salespeople and they don't know what the hell they're talking about. And they have a sales engineer whose job is to know exactly what he's talking about. And so my job was to talk to the people that they were lying to and be like, no, actually, this is how it works. And then they would say, oh, that sounds good. Take my money. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> so it was good. Like it was a, that. Yeah. Sounds like a complicated line to walk a bit. You know what? It was good while it lasted. Sure. So what happened after that? So you lost the job. Yeah. So I lost that job. Was you know unemployed for the tiniest amount of time. And then wound up at a company called Appnetta, and that is where I complained a lot about work. And so anyone who knows me knows exactly what that was like. So I will spare everyone the details, um, but I just left that job about a month, six weeks ago, maybe. And uh, I'm working for a new company now, and it's really good, so glad I've sure. left that behind me. I'm about to game over, by the way. Um <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that uh, the BG BIOS crowd will forgive you, considering how much questionable gameplay we have seen on this channel before. Actually, I think that the <laughs> chat was only praising your skills for the things you've been able to do so far. <laughs> <laughs> so I think they're they're an easy crowd for this sort of thing. Perhaps. I'm rusty, guys. Like, Come on, here we break. No, that's perfect. So. Um, I seem to recall that you uh, you traveled a bit for your your job, despite not liking it. Um, do you want to want to talk about that at all? Or oh, we're... sure, yeah. So <laughs> my job involved travel in the sense that I had to do um, a lot of travel to Canada, primarily, um, barring one other experience, which I will talk about. Um, but I, I flew back and forth to Vancouver a lot. And if anyone here is, well, I guess if you've never been to Vancouver, it's actually one of the prettiest cities I've ever been to. So I would totally recommend visiting there. Just never working for a company based out of there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But also as part of that job, I had to move out to Seattle for just under a year um, to support Microsoft as a customer, which honestly, like, if I'm honest, was a really cool uh, experience, you know, and I do it again, despite everything that happened, but Microsoft as a customer or rather as a company to work for as a contractor is like really bad because they treat their people terribly. Um, you know, I, I, I dealt with a lot out there, you know, like I, I came back, I was all kinds of fucked up. I, I, my depression was like the worst it had ever been. Um, but it was a really cool experience. And, you know, I'd, I'd say if you ever had the opportunity to move across the country for work, you know, you don't necessarily know that it's going to go that way. Right. And so sure. I did it. And I'd always joked that if I was ever going to move out of my parents' house, I'd have to move to the other side of the country. And then, uh, you know, my then boss came to me. He was like, hey, you want to move to the other side of the country? And I'm like, well, I've been saying it for years. So I guess. Sure. Uh, <laughs> happened not to be the best experience. Had some positive experiences out there for sure. Sure. But, um, you know, overall wasn't, wasn't great, but I do it again. Fair enough. Well, I'm glad that you had the opportunity to do it if it's something you do again, but I'm also glad, uh, both for our sake and yours that we got to get you back, uh, on the East coast, since that seems to be a little bit better experience for you. <laughs> um, at least yes. right now. Yes. Good. Perfect. So tell me about your job now. What are you doing? Since it's changed recently, what is it? Yeah, so now I do customer success management, which if you go on Twitter, they call it uh, customer support for white people, um, which is, is pretty accurate. Like, it's just it's just very corporate post sales support for customers. Uh, but instead of like actually doing tech support, well, I guess part of my job is technically tech support. Most of my job is just processing renewals for people. And being like, yes, sir, I will take your problem to the appropriate parties, and then I will get back to you within three to six business days. Um, like, it, it's kind of boring on paper, but actually I get a lot of, I have a lot of opportunities to talk to a lot of people who have interesting problems that I get to solve, or at least this is the way I would describe it if I was in an interview. Um, it's, it's kind of mundane, but I get to do a bunch of different things, and no two days are exactly the same. So, um, you know, it's it's... It's a nice enough variety of tasks where I'm not like sitting around bored after three days on the job. And, um, you know, <laughs> I don't really know what else to sure. say about it. It's just, it's one of those jobs that's kind of nondescript. And then, you know, people who have it and they're like, how do you even get that job? Like, I didn't even know that existed. And it's like, yeah, me neither. <laughs> and then they called me. Fair enough. No, that's that's totally reasonable. Um, what's in the cards for your future? Do you have a dream job on the horizon? Is this the dream job? Is it not something you think about? 
Uh, you know, given that I just left a really, really trash fire, you know, a, a really shitty job, right? Uh, my current plans for the future are to keep this job as long as I can, because it's really nice. So, <laughs> you know, outside of that, I don't, I don't really have any great plans, at least nothing that I could like act on necessarily. Um, you know, my new company is based out of Stockholm, Sweden, and like a kind of a pipe dream I, of mine, I guess, is potentially getting to move out there one day, which I think would be really exciting. I visited sure. uh, a number of years ago, and it's it's a beautiful country. The people are really nice, and I mean, I like all my coworkers, but the the likelihood of that actually happening, who knows? That's reasonable. Loki, will you please leave this alone? <clears throat> all right. Well, Loki will make my awkward transition easier by giving us a moment to to take a breather, and then I can pivot into my next topic. <laughs> never get <Harry>. a dog. <laughs> or I don't think that's what the that audience has, is that taking a... away, no matter what you say. Well, he's never get a dog that has a sense of timing. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the thing like he's never like this until i have something to do <laughs> so. perfect okay Go lay down. so we will pivot a bit and chat just a little bit about identity so um what elements of your identity are most important to you or how might you sum yourself up in a few words Sure. So, I mean, I know, you know, the, the standard answer to this question goes, I am a, a gay man, you know. <laughs> um, but, I mean, I think when people talk about identity, I kind of t don't strongly identify with the train of thought that tells me that my identity is just that of a gay man because personally for me there are so many other things that have just i've experienced in my life and things that just are true about my family um just in general that i don't feel like that's a, a major contributor to things in my life and i mean as much as i'd like to say like it hasn't changed things at all obviously that's just intellectually dishonest and not at all true and apparently i've just completely given up on playing video games here oh my dog <laughs> attacks my hand um but like you know, like that's obviously true, and that's how I've found Boston Gamers, and that's how I'm a part of this community in the first place. Um, but it's not like something that directed my growth as a child, you know, because like sure. where I where I grew up, and I mean, I guess still live. Um, it's just something that nobody ever talked about. And like, yeah, I had gay cousins growing up and I knew gay people growing up, but like they were, that was just it. And like, you know, like, yeah, you know, he'll, you know, my cousin Jeremy will bring over his husband and things are normal and like, it's whatever. So nobody ever really thought about it. Uh, or at least, you know, nobody in like my, my friend group and immediate, immediate sphere of influence, uh, talked about it. So it like, didn't, I think direct my, my growth patterns, if you will. Um, sure. Although my dog trying to bite my hand off may have something to do with that. <laughs> Knock it off. Um, yeah, I don't know. I totally lost my train of thought because trying to keep a cohesive thought together while in severe arm pain is, um, is, is difficult. So if you'll excuse me for a minute, I will finish that thought as soon as you go lay down. <laughs> Loki is adorable, so shout out to Lemon Cream for that comment. Uh, I do agree. Um, <laughs> My hair is all <laughs> fucked up. I mean, like, what else, right? Like, we're dealing with this. Um, holy shit, Loki. Give me two minutes, please. He's gonna he's gonna destroy this cable. But I mean, like, what else, right? I mean, there's things that you can just immediately tell about me, right? Like, I'm a white guy. Only for you know anyone who isn't racist thinks I'm white. <laughs> right? Like, my father's Lebanese. Um, and so when I grew up, we didn't have like a strong sense of of like Middle Eastern culture, right? My no one in my family was Muslim, for example. I mean, my my grandmother was from Lebanon, but Catholic, right? So it's not like that aspect of the culture, but it was primarily food that 
I grew up with. And so for me, like growing up as a just, a, you know, just again, I'll, I'll just refer to myself as a white person because that's how I've always seen myself. Um, you know, I got to experience like my father's family's culture through food. Um, but as I grew up, actually, that was kind of weird because like after 9-11, that's when it immediately like that's when it started becoming more of an issue. Like, I don't I'm not particularly dark skinned, obviously. Um, but if you talk to somebody and you're like, picture a white person, they might picture somebody from like Ireland or they'll picture somebody from like Norway, you know, and not somebody who's from the Middle East, not somebody who looks like they're from Israel, not somebody who looks like they're from Iran, um, you know? And so for me growing up, like that never tracked with me, but when I got into like high school and college and had to deal with people's preconceived notions about what that meant or just like flying in an airport you know <laughs> it's like it didn't like seriously negatively impact my life which is why i don't like super strongly identify with it like i'm not gonna go around being like oh, i'm middle eastern but sure you know it um i guess it's things like that that kind of impact me more just because that's actually people have treated me differently because of that nobody's ever treated me differently because i'm gay right nobody's ever treated me differently because i have long hair people have treated me differently because i listen to metal music you know <laughs> like that sure. had more impact on my ability to make friends in high school than anything else about me you know it's just like <laughs> stuff like that i mean i think there's so much that goes into a person's identity more than just like who they are inherently. Um, sure. You know, and we could talk about that all day. Right. But <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I fight think... with my dog all day. Jesus Christ. <laughs> He's a, a fountain of energy. It seems. <laughs> yeah. All, just tonight for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> We can't post this one in the, in the Discord, you know that. We, we have to delete this VOD. It's totally ruined. I don't think it's totally ruined. I think every moment that Loki causes trouble, if we just gain more fans. Let go. <laughs> Leave it. Perfect. No, I think um, I think you've answered the question quite well because I it, it is an open question for precisely the reason that you described because uh, different people experience this quite differently. So I think that there's no uh, there's no valid or invalid way to um, like in interpret the idea of like what is my identity. It's only you that can interpret that, right? <laughs> um, so that's great. Um, just because we're uh, so you've talked about how it, it did not have a significant impact on your life, not that it wasn't impactful at all, but because it's yeah, an it LGBT matters. server, <laughs> I like to I like to ask people about coming out. So did you have a formal coming out? Um, and if you did, what did that look like? Or if you didn't, then uh, sort of like, how did that process happen for you? So that's a funny one, actually. I um, I, I, I came out in high school, but. I don't think anyone believed me, and my parents are forgotten. So, <laughs> you know, like, what am I? <laughs> what can I do with that? Like, most most of my close friends know, you know, and I had to tell them again when I was in my twenties. <laughs> so, like, you know, I think it's different when you're just talking to a group of people that you've known forever, and. They're like, oh, is this true? I'm like, yeah. Like, can we play Call of Duty now? Can we, like, can we just get back to me? Like, oh, yeah, sure, whatever. Like, like it was, it, there was a coming out process because there has to be one, but it basically boiled down to, hi, guys, I'm gay. And they would go, oh, all right, thanks. We didn't really, like, whatever. That's cool. Like, can we go to the bar? Like, I just want to go somewhere. Like, you're holding us up. Um, which, honestly, when I told my parents, is kind of how it went. It was like in the morning. I was gonna get in the shower or something, and they're like, "Okay, but like you gotta go to school still." I was like, Fuck. <laughs> I, was, "I was really hoping it was gonna let me stay home." But um, yeah. I mean, like I told them they didn't care. They didn't sure. really say anything about it. Um, and then they forgot because I never did anything with it. You know, like I never brought home any boyfriends or whatever. So it was like, well, 
I think they just thought it was a fizz. And today still they talk about like, oh, you know, you, you, when you're married, you'll meet a girl, da 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 da. And I'm like, uh, I don't really want to have to do this again. So but I'm at the point where it's like the coming out process is going to be like, hi, mom, here's whoever he is. <laughs> Get used to him. Sure. Like, the I mean, I guess three if, days. if they didn't care, it probably won't be an issue when it comes up again. right? No, the only thing that worries me, right, is with like the political climate in this country. Everyone's gotten a whole lot more radical, um, you know, and so there's always like that kind of uncertainty. Like, do I really like realistically, do I think there's going to be a problem? No. But in the back sure. of my mind, my anxiety brain is like, but, but. <laughs> you know. Sure. I think that's that's quite normal. That makes a lot of sense. I actually have a, a follow up comment from or a follow up question from my editor, which you'll find hilarious because you've already discussed it. Um, it, which was how often do you have to remind your mother that you are in fact a homosexual uh, well <laughs> the last time was like eight years ago so at least no more frequently than once every eight years um, the upper bounds of that I am still trying to discover by the way someone but remember the number four that's how many secret stars I have at this point um <laughs> Someone put it in the chat for us. Uh, <laughs> we were also asked by AMD when we're getting a BG Bios meet the dogs, um, which I'm just going to field that one, even though it's not, not my BG <laughs> Bios, that uh, that will function better as the pet calendar that we have been promised for approximately uh, as long as BG has existed that has never materialized. So I don't know. Talk to your BG photographer friends <laughs> and uh, make it happen. <laughs> I believe in you. <laughs> no no we'll we'll see maybe i'll do a meet the dogs at some point when i can like do things in person and i'll just invite one of the bg dogs over to my apartment not the owner <laughs> just the dog and yeah, the dog. Uh, i'll talk to them for an hour <laughs> all right perfect so um so I'm going to make a, a bit of a pivot, but um, okay. Loki is kind enough to um, offer me every opportunity to talk about him. So I think pivoting to talking about him at any moment is probably appropriate during this. Um, so go for it. You want to answer, yourself, Loki? You want to answer? You know answer? Tell me everything anyone could possibly want to know about Loki. Well, he's nine months old and like ninety pounds. Um, <laughs> And he's going to grow to like 130, we think. So he's a lot of dog and a lot of dog with puppy energy because he's nine months. So he's very challenging. Um, but, you know, the reason I got a Newfoundland is because they grow up to be very docile. <laughs> you never know it, but they are generally, you know, peaceful, friendly dogs. No, you know, no aggression or anything like that. Right? Jesus Christ, Loki, stop. <laughs> Um, just, you know, he's kind of a troublemaker right now and I wish he'd lay down, but you know, I got him in August of last year and at the time I was actually out of work. I was on a leave of absence for about three months. So the timing worked out really well because for the first two months I had him, uh, I didn't have to go to work. I didn't have to, you know, ever leave for anything except to get groceries. Um, he's taking the mic with him, by the way. It's okay, we can talk to him. Hang he's tangled in it. <laughs> um, yeah, so like I was saying, the first couple of months I had him, I didn't have work. And it made it really, really easy to raise a puppy. Because anytime he needed anything at all... I could just take care of it. You know, I could, I spent every waking minute with him. Right. So, I mean, I watched him like a hawk cause I could afford to. Um, and it just worked like, ugh, excuse me for a second. Sure. <laughs> Insert another awkward silence here. Um, I can I can pull out canned jokes to try to make you laugh at this point, but um, I don't know. I've uh, very left the can opener someplace, so. Um, so you know, it was easier back then because he was smaller and didn't have as much strength and energy. And what the? F 
Go lay down. Go lay down. I'm just waiting. <laughs> Dizza Butter did have a question for Loki, which is who's a good boy? But I feel like you're going to answer not Loki, so maybe I better head that in one general, off. In <laughs> general or right now? Because in general, the answer is Loki. Right now, it's literally any other dog. <laughs> You know, this I, is uh, why you need to co-own Loki with someone, because then you just say your dog is <laughs> <laughs> It's one of those days. I just shouldn't ever. I never should have got rid of the crate or, you know, yeah, well, actually, he, he outgrew it. So that wasn't really. An, an I was going to say he's probably twice the size of the crate at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. All yeah, right. Um, <laughs> do you have any particularly funny Loki stories you can share with us this evening? <laughs> Well, have you seen the past 45 minutes? That would be my question. I've been amused. I didn't like, know if you is, would be. It, it's, it's funny for everybody except me, I think. You know, it's... um, <laughs> Like, there's a certain amount of humor in it in that I can't actually get anything done ever. But, um... Funny stories. I don't really know that I have any particularly funny stories right now. Outside of just his very existence and everything that we've seen tonight. Cause this I is think pretty, that's uh, part that is course. comedy enough for me. You know. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, he's got me. To not... <laughs> <laughs> it won't keep it on the Loki topic too long because I think Loki is happy to keep us focused on him without my assistance. Uh, <laughs> so speaking a little bit, uh, just uh, about Boston Gamers. How long yeah. have you been involved with BG? Ah, so I actually had to look this up beforehand because I do not, you know, I didn't know the exact amount of time, but it was basically like December of 2017 is when I found Boston Gamers. It was just before I lost the really good job I had with Kaspersky. Um, <laughs> so con convenient timing, but... Um, yeah, I've been around just about that long, and I know your next question is going to be, well, how long have you been in a position of leadership? And that answer is, Caleb, how long have you been in a position of final boss? Because the answer is that <laughs> amount of time minus about two weeks. So <laughs> Somewhere around six months at this point. I yeah, think. something like that. <laughs> uh, give or take somewhere in there. <laughs> the other thing you can do is do the math on how many mid bosses I've interviewed and how much time has been between them. Um, but that's a little bit more complicated. So somewhere yes, in there, we'll call it five or six months. Pretty good. Um, yeah, I'm good with five or six months. <laughs> what made you want to be involved in BG leadership? Um, I saw an opportunity for us to have a lot more of a presence online, like Twitch. I'm, I stream occasionally outside of this. And so I knew that there was, you know, plenty of opportunity to be had on Twitch specifically. And, um, I just kind of, yeah, I mean, I really just wanted to capitalize on, on the opportunity. So when the leadership discussions happened, I mean, part of it was, you know, can we have a, um, you know, a role for this basically. Like we didn't really have a, a streaming arm of the, you know, arm of the group. Right. Sure. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess it really just boils down to, I saw that there was an opportunity to, you know, to do something that we weren't doing before. Um, and get it done. Right. Yeah, no, I think that makes great sense. Um, and I think you certainly it's, it's, I would be like one of many people to say that you've brought life to our Twitch channel, even before you were in leadership, but also being able to be recognized for it with mid bosshood was, I think just a natural move. Um, Good so, old charity yeah. streams. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, <laughs> we don't, <laughs> can't talk about that yet. <laughs> no. Oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, what makes BG a home for you? Why have you stuck around? So if you've been around since December of 2017, you have been here for three and a half years. Um, that's a good long while. Uh, what 
what made you stick around that entire time? Um, I met a lot of really important people that are near and dear to me. Uh, yeah, while in BG, and I think a community is nothing if not for its people. Um, and if BG wasn't a solid group of people first and foremost, I probably wouldn't, you know, wouldn't have stuck around. Sure. I think that's a great answer. Someone um, remember the number six, by the way. <laughs> all right. Put six in the chat for us. Last time four people put four. Maybe six people will put six. <laughs> <laughs> I got six sixes. Please stop now. Not a single go. one more. <laughs> no, perfect. Uh, <laughs> do you have any favorite BG memories you'd like to share? Um, karaoke in general, I guess that's not really a, a memory. It's just a thing I like to do. Um, I think that's but fine. <laughs> being able to go to karaoke is somewhat of a distant memory at this point. So I'm going to say that because I'm a diva. <laughs> I think that's I mean, also fair. just kind of in general, I mean, like the charity streams that we have done, but if you say we can't talk about those yet, fine. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's hard to pick any one thing because every time we get together, it's been something I've really appreciated and it's just been a lot of fun for me to go to, um, sure. you know, so it's hard to be like, ah, this thing. <laughs> <laughs> sure thing. Um, Gets shout out, out to house. AMD for doing the most will thing possible and putting the seventh, sixth in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have Will's with us with e with us this evening, but uh, I'm sure he would be proud. <laughs> um, is there anything you'd like to see change in BG moving forward? Anything, any goals, any changes that you have in mind? Uh, yeah, I'd like to take over and make it a uh, dictatorship. Uh, that is really my my overall goal. Um, I think no one knows what they're doing, and uh, it'd be better if I just had control of everything. <laughs> Isn't it <obvious>? okay? <laughs> I'm going to leave that right where it lays. <laughs> um, Zach's coming for us, so <laughs> good to know. At least I have advanced warning, right? <laughs> now I feel like I've harassed AMD. <laughs> there are tears in the chat. <laughs> That's okay. The low-key squeaking will make up for it. Um, yeah, I'm sorry for that, by the way. Weird. I just needed to get him out of my hair. Yeah, I think it's the funniest thing in the world. I think Chad is loving it, so please don't apologize. Um, yeah, Oni well, says, don't case, be I'm sorry in all caps. <laughs> um, all right, so let's talk a little bit about what, how you spend your spare time, other than keeping Loki out of trouble, insofar as that is an accomplishable goal. Um, so if I'm not mistaken, and actually you just referenced this, so it's perfect, um, you have a pretty active life on Twitch. That's right, right? Yeah, I don't know that I necessarily call it active, but I do I do stream a bit. Sure. Um, I spend probably most of my free time working on music. I've posted some in the server. Uh, I'm not like a super prolific songwriter, I guess. Like I'm not, you know, releasing a new track every couple of weeks or anything like that. Um, but I do spend a lot of time just like practicing guitar and, you know, learning songs and writing songs and come, you know, trying to arrange shit because I'd like to eventually figure out how to play it. Right. <laughs> um, so a lot of my time goes to that. Sure. Otherwise, um, so you know, I, I hang out on Twitch a lot, of course. <laughs> we can, we can start with the music. So, um, what sorts of things do you write? What genre of music are you interested in? I think you've mentioned you're interested in metal. Is that what you write and play as well? Yeah, primarily, although recently I've been getting into electronic music more and more. And so I've uh, been released or not releasing, but I posted some like, you know, drum and bass stuff and just anything that's that's fun. Right. Is kind of my my overall goal here. Sure. I'm two coins short. I'm mad. Um <laughs> We're going on an adventure here, <laughs> but you know, I mean, we do love I, I, I like anything uh, as far like as far as music is concerned. I'm into a lot of stuff, and I do a biweekly songwriting competition, which keeps me busy. Um, I'm not usually the primary songwriter. Um, I I sing on a lot of tracks, and so those wind up being all over the map stylistically. So. 
they keep me busy. Like I just recorded this morning, actually, for the latest round. The song is due on Monday. So. Gotcha. That's pretty cool. What do you do? The what's the competition for? Like what kind of? I guess competition is like kind of the wrong wrong word to use because it's not like we're not competing to like win anything, you know. Sure. It's just uh, it's for, it's just for fun. It's for Reddit clout, you know. <laughs> like, Reddit clout is a real currency, you know. <laughs> but it's, you know, it's just that. fun. It gets people that are like minded working on stuff and. You know, it's a it's a new prompt every couple of weeks, so it's not just like oh, write whatever song that you want, and if it's if it's good, it's good. It's um, you know, follow this theme, get three people together, you're gonna write a song about that theme, and you know, it's just like I said, competition's probably the wrong word, but yeah, it's uh, no, that it's makes fun sense. It keeps me busy. So, um, Guy actually asked, are you working on any music at the moment? So I'll modify that just because you've talked a little bit. Are you working for any, working on any music outside of what you just recorded for the, the bi-weekly song, um, composition entry or is there anything so, else? G- this question coming from Guy is funny cause he knows that I'm working on something else. I'm currently <laughs> working on, uh, so for some, for some context, a couple of weeks ago, uh, renowned rapper, little Nas X put out a song called Montero and people really liked it. So if you've never heard it, go listen mm. to it. It's pretty good. Actually, I think the song kind of sucks, but the music video is kind of fun. So whatever. Um, but one thing that always happens when like pop songs come out is somebody is going to be, somebody always puts a metal cover of it on YouTube and no one's done it uh, in a way that's any good. So I'm working on one and maybe it's going to suck, but Hey, you know, I want to try it and maybe it'll, may, maybe I'll be famous on YouTube. I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> but Fair I'm, I'm d- spending some of my free time on on that i actually just finished arranging it yesterday or the day before so maybe it'll you know maybe it'll be done one day gotcha. <laughs> hopefully one day soon right i'll put it that way <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so let's hop back uh, and talk about Twitch a little bit. Um, I think we've covered the music stuff pretty well, though. Uh, definitely check out the music channel to see see the stuff that Zach posts. I'm sure that there will be more stuff in the future. Is that am I correct in assuming that? Yeah. M- maybe you'll be kind enough to post to post your uh, what you're working on right now when you've uh, finished it up. Yeah, when um, it's done, for sure. <laughs> great. Um, so what do you stream on Twitch exactly? Um, what sorts it of things are you interested depends. in? It depends. Usually, I stream speedruns. And for a good chunk of time, I was streaming Super Mario 64 speedruns. Uh, as you can tell, I'm very rusty. I haven't done a lot of that recently. Um, <laughs> Paper Mario is another one of my favorite games. and I stream speedruns of that. Um, I did Castlevania. So usually the content that you can find on my channel is speedrunning content. Um, but right now I'm actually playing um, Thousand Year Door uh, for not technically the first time, but I played it when I was a kid and I kind of thought it was garbage. So I'm, I'm trying to give it a fair shake as an adult. <laughs> I'm not sure I know what that is. Do you want to tell anyone about it? Oh, yeah. So The Thousand Year Door is the sequel to Paper Mario. It came out on the GameCube oh, in about 2004. It. So it's kind of old, but, you know, okay. everything Fair I enough. like is old. So, <laughs> Do you want to rep your Twitch handle just so people know where they can go to follow you? Yeah, it's Headness. It's, <laughs> it's just Headness. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So go follow Zach on Twitch if you don't already. (laughs) That's good stuff. Um, (laughs) um, Also, earlier, Dizzabutter said that this is the best gameplay that we've ever seen on BG Bios. And just now, AMD said this gameplay is incredible. So for all your your (laughs) self-insulting, I'm telling you, you must have an easy crowd for the sort of thing you're doing because they all love it. (laughs) <laughs> they think you're doing great. <laughs> Don't well, tell me how you got it. into. <laughs> tell me how you got into speed running in the first place, since that's what you traditionally do. That's kind of a niche thing, I think. Yeah. So when I was in college, um, Games Done Quick is a charity marathon that happens every year, and it was like really blowing up at the time. Uh, and I used to watch that every year. And during one of those uh, charity marathons, I'd see people 
play like Mario 64 and Super Mario World, a bunch of games that I grew up with, um, and they beat them in like, you know, times to me, they were like, this is impossible. How do people do this? You know? Um, so I just thought it was really, really cool. And for the longest time, I, I like didn't know how to get into it. And then one day I was like, fuck it, I'll just try it. Um, and the rest is history, I guess. So I, I just, I used to watch, watch a lot of speedrunning content on YouTube. And, um, you know, eventually I got my head on my own ass and was like, ah, I can do it. I can just try it, you know, figure, finally start. So I guess, I guess that's about as succinct as I can tell that story, but overall, I think that's a, that's a very clean narrative. That makes a lot of sense. Um, so do you, do you spend much time gaming off of Twitch or is it mainly just what you do for your followers? Like, are you playing anything else right now? Um, you know, it's funny. Like I don't really do a lot of gaming on my own anymore. Um, I used to do a whole lot more, but you know, recently it's like, there's something about like, I'm kind of burnt out, I guess on on video games would be the, probably the most appropriate way to, to describe it. Cause like they used to be a really nice source of like escapism and just, it was a fun hobby to do. Um, but now if I'm like just trying to sit down in front of my TV and just play a video game for a little while, I find myself kind of just getting frustrated with them. Like, why isn't it moving? Like, you know, and like, it's not bringing me the same level of relaxation it used to. And the reason I stream on Twitch and you might be thinking like, well, if you hate video games, why do you stream? Um, streaming is more like it's, it's like hanging out with my friends. That's kind of the way I see it. And in this time of quarantine, especially where I can't reliably go out and see people without having to then lock myself in my room for two weeks. Um, it's a nice, it's a nice way to connect with other people, even if they can only type to me. And I've made a number of friends just off of Twitch, um, sure. you know, through the shared games that we'd play. So it's, um, you know, it's overall, I think a positive, positive experience, right? Sure. No, that's great. Uh, what is your entertainment landscape outside of video games and music like? Do you watch much TV or movies at all? Or I, so I have a Disney Plus subscription, um, and I only have it to watch The Simpsons, and I've paid for it for a number of months, and I've watched maybe four episodes of The Simpsons. So uh, don't really watch much TV. Um, couldn't tell you the last time I watched a movie. Um, really my main source of entertainment these days is music, you know, I, sure. and I guess video games too. Right. But no, it's sure. really those, those two, I like to tell people I'm you know into reading, but realistically what I do is I buy a lot of books and then never read them. So they're just sitting on my shelf. So I collect books, but not even books that are worth collecting, just books that I think sound like I might like to read them and I don't read them. So I'm also, you know, very well read. (laughs) (laughs) Well shelved anyway. Yeah, very well shelved. (laughs) Very well shelved. (laughs) No, I think that's that's an experience that's relatable to a lot of people as well. (laughs) Um, So Kara actually actually asks a question that I think will be great to wrap up on today. Um, what is your favorite color? Oh, my favorite color. It's, um, it's, it's the, the right joy con on the animal crossing switch. This is my favorite color. Right here. <laughs> I, that might've been too bright because of the, the ring light I have up. So let, let's get a little bit closer there. Uh, it's still gonna really say, I'm not sure. Shine. Yeah, it's there, that okay. that color. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right Joy-Con. Right Joy-Con <laughs> color is my favorite color. Oni says seafoam. <laughs> yeah, um, we call it seafoam. I like pastels. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Zach's version of the crayon says right joy con on the Animal Crossing <laughs> Nintendo Switch. It's really long. It's a, right? it's a it's long really crayon. Long, long ass crayon. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's perfect. All right, with that, I think we have gone through most of what I had for us today. Um, so before our viewers start departing, I did have a slight note that I wanted to add. Um, so we've been running BG Bios for about nine months now, and I've been having a hell of a time. Zach has been uh, like at every single one of them. Literally, Zach is the only person who's been at every single one of them because I gave it over to a guest host and a guest that wasn't me once. So Zach gets to claim having been there and I wasn't. Um, 
So I couldn't appreciate more that so many of you show up to watch every week or watch the vids later or just support it in whatever way you do. I love it. It's been the time of my life. Um, I'm not going to give too much away, but I have uh, some plans boiling around in my head and working with some other people um, to sort of break o open the formula of the show and try to do some fun different things in, a different, in addition to these bio style interviews. Um, and because of that, I'm going to uh, rebrand the show and call it Questionable Gameplay, both because that's a lot more fun of a name and because uh, it opens up the concept to do some some non bio -y interview gameplay things that I'm excited about. Um, Huge shout out, as always, like both for today and in general to Oni and Zach, who are like the backbone of this show. I get to like come out and host it and smile and be the face of it in most cases. But uh, I think without Oni and Zach, I couldn't do the show at all. And in fact, the the name Questionable Gameplay was arrived on after Oni and I probably threw 27 and a half suggestions back and forth at each other. <laughs> <laughs> for what I wanted to call the show. Oni has like a, quite a good sense for what a good name is and what a good name isn't. So they're probably the best person to like tell something to. And Oni would be like, that's fine. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, next one. <laughs> Let me come up with a different idea. <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm super excited. So keep your, uh, your ears and your eyes open to hear more about that in the near future. Um, that's all I'll say about that now. I can get go through my litany of thank yous. Thank you to Zach, f who uh, today ran the tech for his own interview, which was more complicated than anything I've asked him to do before, <laughs> but also runs the tech for every single one of these. He's here every time. You just don't see him until today. Um, I could not appreciate that more. Um, my scripts are vastly improved by the additions of Oni, and I could not appreciate their support more. Um, if I had like credits for this show, if I get a producer credit, so do Zach and Oni. <laughs> um, thank you for, to all the mods and planners who support this, and uh, all of you for showing up in the Twitch chat. Um, it's amazing, and I appreciate it. Thanks for coming tonight. Um, and with that, I think I've said all I have to say. Do you have any final words for our audience, Zach? Or does oh, Loki have, have a final cameo? <laughs> I have two sets of final words. <laughs> sure. One is I kind of feel bad because now that he's finally left me alone, we could actually finally start talking. Now we're coming to an end. So, you know, <laughs> but there, there is that. Um, but also, would you care to know why cake is better than pie and why the worst <laughs> pie is worse than the worst cake? <laughs> I mean, this is your moment, so I can't take it away from you, even if I want to. Good, because it's kind of a story. I'll make it quick, but my mother's a Canadian, <laughs> so French-Canadian, and they apparently have this meal up there that they call Rappi Pie. And if you're not familiar with Rappi Pie, as no sane human should be, it's um like eight pounds of potatoes strained through cheesecloth packed together with nothing on it except, except salt pork and if you've never had the specific kind of salt pork that goes on top it's solid <laughs> like rocks um, I thought I broke my tooth the only time I've ever had it um, and you know it tastes like dehydrated potatoes and salt so they call it a pie it's not a cake cake's never done me like that <laughs> I've never been hurt by cake. <laughs> Please join us in two weeks for the debate show in which I'll take on <laughs> the definition of pie with my good friend, Zach. <laughs> no. And we'll call it questionable gameplay. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> no, perfect. Um, I, I do wonder whether that can conceivably call, be called pie as pie is defined or whether that's a holdover, like calling a Boston cream pie a pie or calling a, uh, a pizza a pie is a holdover from a previous era in which a pie was just any round food dish. <laughs> <laughs> But I will leave that to a more philosophical age. Um, so with that, does Loki have a final cameo here? He's biting your hand. <laughs> Perfect. There what better is. to end on? <laughs> Taking a round of applause for Loki. We love it. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Thanks for coming. Have a great Thanks, evening. Thanks, everybody. Good night. <laughs> Bye.